Welcome to the map Westfold in the Battle for Middle Earth 1 on page 2.22 in a phenomenal and great matchup between good and evil. We have Mordor on the top side of the map versus Gondor on the bottom side of the map. So El Clasico matchup and Theodin cannot complain anymore because we know where Gondor was when Westfold fell. Gondor was just there to support Rohan, it seems like. So Blacksmith Farm opening, he went for the post Angi to capture the settlement outside. You can also go for double farm opening against Mordor because you don't need the upgrade super early. All you need are the knights and because the farm is cheaper and also will give you the food bonus, it will make it overall easier for you to go for the knights a bit quicker. And each second matters a lot in this matchup because, you know, if you get your knights on the field 5 seconds or 10 seconds before, it will give you much more momentum which you can use for your advantage. The Smeagol doing what he's the best at, being annoying, you know, pressuring the soldiers of Gondor over and over again. He's a tanky boy, he won't get punished super fast, so he can always disengage and re-engage whenever he needs to. The orcs were able to sneak through, they will be annoying now to destroy this farm over there. But when you play as Gondor, uh, as Mordor against Gondor, you always need to check this side, because now you see the Hobbit at the bottom then you need to know that this settlement cannot be captured until now. And then you, your orcs can move to the spot and capture this one for free. Orc pit into the second orc pit and Haradrim Palace right after. Mordor is a phenomenal economy. What I would like to do go for is a third orc pit just to pressure the map a bit faster and keep pretty much everything what the map Westfold has to offer. I of Sauron has been used. They might get level 2, which would not be a situation you want to be <laughs> finding yourself in. And I think even now, the two orcs plus Gollum plus the Eye of Sauron and heal being on cooldown, Mordor should be able to win this battle. The Knights of Gondor will be there very, very soon. But Mordor is controlling the entire map before this is gonna happen. So, Gondor has only one two outer settlement outside, that's not enough. No, he will not be as rich as his opponent will be. And Mordor should move to this creep instead, because you have time. Your opponent has to deal with this orcs first and potentially go to the top side, and your, your uh, Haradrims with your orcs can creep this one first and capture this outpost. It's going to be the first outpost you need to capture. Then you can build two orc pits from this outpost and pressure with one of them the middle area, and the other one has to pressure these two settlements at the bottom side all game long. So you want to always capture the outpost which is closer to the enemy, because the ones which are closer to your castle, you can always capture later on, because they will be most likely uncontested. He's creeping this one with plenty of orcs. The knights of Gondor were able to clean this up and now capturing this farm and moving to the war clear. And I think the second knight is gonna go to the bottom side. But during all this time, Mordor's eco is untouched. What I would like to do in this matchup as Mordor is to go for the, for the troll cage and recruit as many mountain trolls as my opponent has Knights of Gondor. The reason for that is simple, then I can order them to chase down the enemy knights all the time and they will not be able to punish my economy anytime soon. Because you can do that with the rune soldiers as well, however the runes, they are of course not evil and capable of keeping with the speed of the, of the knights. Trolls are much faster than runes. So when you see three knights, you go for three trolls, then you can stop the uh, troll recruitment and go for the Nazgul instead. But they will give you so much freedom and so much momentum that, you will, that your Nazgul won't be delete. Because you will have a much easier time protecting your outer settlements. Otherwise that's gonna happen, you will lose them over and over again. Uh, two outposts captured by Mordor, he's gonna move to the third outpost. The money will be taken by Gondor though. There are too many orcs, no upgrades on the Gondorites, and also one more spot to fill, which is about to happen now. Hobbit was finally able to destroy the slaughterhouse at the bottom side of the map. And these two creeps are the ones with the troll in the middle that are remaining on the map Westfold. But you see what I'm talking about? Imagine in this situation you had a troll chasing down this knight over and over again. This lumber mill behind your castle will not be destroyed all game long. Power point wise, we have two power points for Gondor and uh, zero power points for Mordor because he was capturing the land and then the industry right after. He has 2.2k. 
most people i think you, you know rushing means it won't be faster you know when you lose your outer settlements your nazgul won't won't be there fast on the field uh, then when you go for the troll cage recruit two three trolls but keep your outer settlements you will not benefit a lot from the time you know beautiful trample by the way great job knights everywhere on the map and that's good when you hide behind the structure the haradrims will not be able to shoot at you if also the shields which will make them extra resistant to the arrows the haradrims are dealing and with that you can even commit when you have to heal to destroy the sitter so the only creep remaining is the troll creep in the middle of the map mordor has 4.2k but he never recaptured the settlements behind not even this one in the front uh, so he's playing a bit lazy even though the mystic um the mistakes he does are forgivable in a matchup like this which by the way obviously favors the mordor faction the best because the map is you know the best map for mordor it's plenty of settlements map with plenty of outposts lots of um space between the settlements so all of these circumstances are favoring the mordor faction the most but still if you recapture them you will get more money and you will be in a much stronger spot than you currently are runes of course are very strong against knights of condor no doubt about that but remember they have not the speed in the same situation like mentioned before if you have a couple of trolls chasing down these knights they would not be doing that what they are just doing even the nazgul just came but the damage will still be great and plenty of structures will be destroyed for absolutely no reason don't chase it's a level or actually chase it level five take him down but in the meantime demolish your structures in time don't feed powerpoints powerpoints are the best weapon from gondor in every single matchup and that comes to rohirrim summon remember he lost the haradrim palace it means no more rune production anytime soon and more damage will be dealt and mordor is not recapturing any of the uh, any of the settlements for the past two minutes and each settlement would give you around about 500 resources in a minute so he's missing out on a, on a bunch for absolutely no reason all of the structures have been destroyed they have to be rebuilt and all of them will be only rank one so the money income from the inner settlements is going to be also way less than before yes mordor has still the three outposts under his control that's pretty good but here also orc pit very important to build orc pit at this spot just to pressure this side and while your goal should be when gondor is rushing your base your orcs which will be recruited from the outpost should take down the entire map you know basically make gondor starve make him poor hobbit is blocking this but you can always reveal the hobbit with the eye of sauron without any problems Boromir has been recruited that's a great choice I like Boromir recruitment because you obviously need to know okay whatever I do in this matchup it doesn't matter it will always go to the lead game and that's why Boromir is such a great investment into the lead game uh, Gondor is kind of poor though not going for the Gandalf kind of starving to death a little bit so the second Nazgul could maybe be an early decidement he's going for a troll cage doing that but I just said like five minutes ago the game is about reaction so whenever you see action from your opponent you need to react to the action right because you see even though he has an asgul gondor is not afraid he's gonna just go in and deal damage or repeat because he knows the amount of the time the nazgul needs to kill all of the knights is gonna be too, uh, too much time consuming but the map is looking great here you want to kill the hobbit as soon as possible you can also do that by pressing the G button on your Nazgul and guarding this area. Nazgul G is able to, uh, you know, detect the invisible units too, just like the Eye of Sauron. And then you clear this and go for the Mumma Kill Pan and maybe a Troll Cage even at the outpost. You want to always bring the fight to them as, as Mordor. You know, you don't want, you want to keep him busy on his side of the map that your castle will remain untouched for the, for the majority of the game. So Mordor is 4.2k as power points for the for the darkness. Here you don't need devastation. You have such a great map control. Devastation can still be helpful. So you get your second Nazgul or Witch King a bit quicker on the field. Again, all of that will mean you will lose power points, war in terms of speed, 
but you exchange that loss with a bit more momentum so you have two nazgus chasing down the knights that means you will collect the power points a bit quicker that's the ideal situation invest power points to gather more power points out of the investment boromir fighting level five that's good he stopped making orcs from the beast went only for slaughterhouses never stop making orcs by the way never ever do that orcs are your best weapon it's an over commitment Parami can be recruited very very soon condor is kind of starving though condor is super weak and super poor can't keep with the map of course thanks to the nazgul which also is able to gather many many power points for the model player which is very good Going for more trolls, which king is going to be recruited very soon. And Gondor is still far away from getting to the point of him being able to recruit the wizard. He's going to lose. Don't demolish this. When you have something to shoot, um, furnaces are not stuff that you need to demolish. You need to demolish statues, wells, and also sentry towers. But furnaces, of course, they also give a little bit of uh, power points when you don't demolish them in time. But if your Haradrims are shooting and you will kill in exchange some of the knights, it's totally worth the trade, you know? You see Boromir is doing a good job taking these arrows from the uh, from the Haradrims and will single-handedly be able to destroy the tower of the outpost. Rohirrim summon has been reused for the second time. And the commitment on the big castle of Mordor. And remember what I said at the beginning of the game, you know, when you go for the Troll Cage a bit earlier, by this time your, your Troll Cage would be ranked 2, you would have a Drummer Troll in your base, so you had a bit more durability on your Trolls and also a bit more strength. But also, uh, you would have 4 Trolls and the Rohirrim Summon would, would not deal any damage to you. Eagles have been summoned too, by the way. I think with the Eagles he just killed the Nazgul. That is the Witch King yet. Witch King is also fighting against the Eagle. Eagle is gonna eat the Witch King. He died at the same time. Troll Cage was protected barely. Never mind. Beautiful. That was a nice hit, actually. And uh, that's super important because he destroyed the Troll Cage right after, hit, after was, it was hitting rank 2. It means no more drummer trolls anytime soon for Mordor. He has to rebuild the Troll Cage and recruit again four mountain trolls before he's able to recruit the drum. Turn and fight them. Don't let them hit for free. Oh my god, he's taking way too much damage for absolutely no reason. Now he can even fight the troll. You can never fight the troll when he's full health. Just eat the orc. Trolls, uh, I mean the knights with the heavy armor are super beefy. There comes the wizard. Looking to use Istari. Oh, he just killed a lot of his own stuff with the Nazgul. And Gondor in the meantime taking over the map. So Wizard is gonna of course buy some time. Great catch actually with the Ganoff. That's very really nice. Very well done. Did he cancel it? I think he cancelled it. That's why he didn't one shot the Nazgul. But Easter Light should be able to finish the job. Just use Easter. -y. Uh he couldn't get in the range to use it. And the Nazgul is going to get in safety. Yeah, you can revive the Fallen Nazgul and Witch King for free. But it's going to take a lot of time. 3 minutes and 30 seconds. It's a very long time. Because you need to understand that the beast, the average game duration of the game is around about 12 to 13 minutes. So you losing a Nazgul and having to revive it will mean that you need to reinvest 30% of the game duration into waiting for your heroes to re-arrive on the field. Nah, <laughs> nah, he was on the hunt, boys. He didn't want to let the Nazgul escape, but the Nazgul escaped in either in, in any case. So, demolish two of the structures. Going for a Boromir, I think he was getting killed before. Archer range and also the marketplace. Both of them are a great choice. You need to start capturing the outposts as Condor now. Super important. And you build three farms, and even if the Nazgul wants to destroy your outpost, it's totally fine. It will take him so much time to destroy your outpost that Istari has been used. Oh my god, he fall. He fell. 
And I cannot believe that the Hobbit was cloaked there for, for the past 10 minutes in the game, boys. That should not be allowed, by the way. Paramir, uh, you don't need combos against Gondor, against Mordor. All you need are rangers. Rangers, fire arrows, that's all you need. Ooh. Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. Does he have Easter -y? Is he gonna catch him? A nice catch one more time. I mean, I don't wanna I don't wanna talk bad about Gondor because he's doing a good job. But also at the same time, Mordor is not being careful enough. You know? Like when you've been caught by the by the lightning sword once, like it's very hard for Gondor to catch your Nazgul with the lightning sword if you pay attention. But it feels like that Mordor didn't pay attention to his Nazgûls, even though he has not much more stuff to recruit, uh, to micro. There comes the Rohirrim summon for the third time. Witch King is coming. You screech with the Witch King to scare the off, scare them off. Um, and also demolish these structures. That's very important because in the power points, we have 10 power points for Mordor. He's 10 power points away from the Balrog. And uh, Gondor player is only 6 power points away from his EOD. So, so Palindru is definitely winning the power point war just because Mordor doesn't demolish the structures which have to be destroyed or demolished because they do feed more power points and of course he's also losing Nazgûl all over the place. Boromir is simply walking to Mordor going for the troll cage. And that's gonna be the first time Mordor going for the drama troll. Um, and one more important thing I need to mention. When you know that your opponent, in this case the Gondor player, has the Eagles, there we go, and he's using them for the second time. You need to be prepared for this, okay? How are you prepared for this? You either go for the Mumma Kills and put Haradrims on top of the Mumma Kills, or you need to make combos. Lightning Sword will connect again, and Gandalf is gonna fall, uh, fell, or destroy <laughs> the Witch King. Level 7 Gandalf to White Boys. Hitting every lightning sword on every Nazgul. The eagles are doing a phenomenal job. Being ultra strong. The damage output is kind of nasty. Hitting like an absolute track. And destroying the Mumma Kill Pan before anyone was able to enter. But it's going to be a deja vu moment. Because eagles will be ready again in 6 minutes 30 seconds. And also in 6 minutes 30 seconds. There will not, not be a thing that can counter them. Your Nazgûls cannot fight them in a face-to-face -face fight. Eagles are hero killers, so that's their specialty. They will win. Even a 2v3 they will win. Two Nazgûls and Witch King and Eagles will kill you. <laughs> that's how strong they are, you know? So Mordor being the one who is definitely ahead from the beginning until the last three minutes into the game, wasn't able to use the advantage he got nicely you know he never grouped and went for the castle he never recaptured the settlements he has lost so made a bunch of mistakes which led to the situation we are in right now easter light will be used chunking dealing hella damage to the nazgul because he's rank 7 and mumma kilpan finally back on the menu boys and you want to put Haradrims on top. Haradrims on top of the Mumma Kills cannot be targeted, by the way. They're untargetable. So, and you can, with them, also kill the Eagles quite fast. Lightning Sword. That's a bad Lightning Sword. Commit on Gerhaf. Oh, he has to cancel it. There we go. Does he have heal? No, it's on cooldown. Nazgul is going to commit on him. Does he have anything that can shoot at the, at the tower? Yes, it has. He has something. There comes a Screech, it's a nice Screech though, because they are only level 2, they will get scared too by the by the Screech, and the Knights of Gondor will be taken down. They have 14 power points for Mordor, and 7.5 power points for Gondor, so definitely closer to the to the EOD. But what makes me worried about the situation for Mordor is the fact that he is losing the map. And Gondor has now the outpost at the top left side. He will also have the outpost at the bottom right side. Put them inside, put them inside, put them inside! He's trying to, but he can't. The splash damage coming in handy, but we have the white wizard. It has to be good for something. Another Nazgul. And the Witch King is going to be there very, very soon as well. Now, with the two Nazguls and the Witch King, and like two Mumma Kills, it's the bare minimum you need. You, you want to use the moment to bring the fight to the base of Gondor. Ignore this, because whenever they go for your base, you will have trolls and stuff to defend yourself. 
plenty of towers and you need to bring the fight to the Gondor castle because Mordor has the money to capture this so when you, when you destroy it you can capture it for yourself but you see the lack of map control because he's not making orcs anymore he just making orcs again from but he's only one orc pit on a map like this one orc pit is just not enough you want to have always a double orc pit in your castle and one orc pit on each outpost you have otherwise you are just not creating space or putting pressure on your opponent for him to worry about losing the map control which king gonna get bullied dodge the Gana, very important easter will be able to finish you darkness available which king will also give leadership to the to the moment kills Faramir, get over here, Faramir. Oh, this, you know, fancy footwork. I mean, he has market please too, right? He's gonna get a lot of money from the rank three farms, like crazy. Oh, that's a big and bad commitment. He's gonna get a lot of power points from this battle. The Muma is gonna fall. The ranges are hitting like an absolute truck. And the Muma is gonna go down to Goblin Town. Faramia will get slaughtered in the meantime. Nine power points for Gondor and 17 power points for Mordor. But he never cares about the farms. He doesn't have these farms behind his piece for the for the last i want to say 10 minutes maybe i'm i'm overreacting but it's just not forgivable you know for you to not capture the most important farms which will just make sure that you will have always and always great amount of money witch king Ooh, that's another mistake do not let witch king die like this it's your most important hero like when you think about Aizen, you want to keep your Saruman alive. When you think about Gondor, you want to keep your Ganef alive. When you keep, think about Rohan, you want to keep Aragorn, Gimli or Kyrgyz alive. And for, for, you know, Mordor, it's definitely the Witch King. EOD is available. 19 power points against 20. Against 10, I mean. Look, he doesn't recapture. I mean, of course, uh, lots of multitasking is required on a map like this. But always check. Like, like when you, when you see the minimap, okay check 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 that's it it's gonna take you three seconds check every few seconds check okay do i need to recapture everything it's gonna commit on the on the base the baradur has been destroyed in a second bro here him summon i told you late game gondor with plenty of summons is definitely not to be joked with one of the most powerful factions in the lead game the most powerful thanks to the summons of the power points the eagles are also different caliber you know super strong creatures outpost captured by but he has not the money he has the balrog though he will be able to summon the balrog in a second all he has to do yeah there we go balrog is available but the question is where does he summon the balrog at he has the money to recapture this piece by the way does Condor have the money to buy this piece nope he doesn't have the money for this beast just yet so Mordor has all the outposts under his control. And, you know, just win the game now. Just win it. Did he lose all the Nazgûls? Yes, he, he lost all the Nazgûls. But it doesn't matter. Get this outpost with a troll. Put a troll there. Ooh, son. Okay, I want to see a great Baldrock micro. Fly in. Why would you waste time like this? This base is definitely destroyable. Maybe not, because he has 2 level 3, but you can still deal great amount of damage to the base. It's gonna capture this outpost, just to feel a bit more safe. And the Balrog is just wasted too much time. Step up, you wanna stay right here. Use prep fire, but face your face like this. Yeah, his ignite was off. That's why he couldn't kill this uh, level 3 blacksmiths. Ignite will empower your damage by 200%. Also affects the damage of the breath fire. Okay. He could low-key destroy this piece, by the way. Because he has a Mumu kill. He could destroy this piece low-key. But he didn't. 
Yeah, it's gonna get punched a little bit, but the outputs will go down. And uh, Farami is protecting this out uh, this castle. That he went for the for the recruit uh, revivement. Okay, that's good. He's gonna revive them from this outpost there. Mordor is gonna lose the money he has though. Mordor is gonna lose the money he has. He has basically. I mean, that's what I was like. I don't want to repeat myself though. I already said it many many times. Map control is everything. Do not say to yourself, I, I have already 8,000, I don't need it. You know. Because the money will always go down, down, down. You need to sustain your economy. You need to generate more than you spend. That's how you grow rich. Also, financial advice for your real life, bro. You're welcome. And all of that for free in a YouTube video. That's why you are subscribed to the channel, boys. We've expanded the old pit. What are these? The hit? Ooh, nice. Okay. <laughs> now you can destroy it, actually. Orcs. Finally, orcs. Finally, orcs. Like, imagine it. Orcs spam all over the place. Now you could even invade the base of your opponent and send orcs in the base and destroy the structures over and over again. With darkness, I of Sauron, they also will deal hella damage to the buildings. Go for the call the heart. Go for the... Go for the devastation. Look, they will hit level two. They will be so strong. Paramia is gonna get bullied. Go stunned from the cloud break. But rank three is immune. He has arches inside, so it should be fine. Para is gonna go down. He has the money to rebuy this piece for himself. There's a two outpost, and oh, he just recaptured it. Build, 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 build. Oh, he just hit exclusive with the Paradour. It's gonna go down, I think. It's gonna go down. Rebuild it. Rebuild it. He's killing Gandalf, actually. Does he have heal? He has heal. He's gonna use heal. He's gonna repair it. Heal is gonna be used. Kill the Rangers, bro. Again, Witch King is gonna kill him, by the way. If he doesn't uh, move away now. He's gonna die slowly, but surely. Okay, the base has been redestroyed <laughs> after recapturing it because he has nothing to defend it, you know? No runes, no trolls, nothing. Will Gandalf die though? Do not come between the Nazgul and his prey. He's just stalling and sitting here and waiting. Um, also going for the outpost. Just doesn't want him to recapture this because he has the money to do that. He has seven power points in the bank. Can could go for the devastation. I uh, could go for the cold heart. I mean, and use the money for something. He's gonna go for the outpost, and if the outpost falls, it's gonna be the win for Gondor. And GG well played, Gondor played very nice though. I don't, I want to give him that give him that one. But Mordor has definitely the, the chance to win this game. But the combination of both, Gondor playing very good. And Mordor, not so good. And there goes the victory for Gondor, boys. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, you know what to do. I've, you know, I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.